This presentation is based on my book, The Tabernacle as a Model for Meditation. During this workshop, we will be discussing how the tabernacle is a model for meditation. What this statement actually means will become clearer the further along we go. The tabernacle itself will be seen as a model of the human body, which we will verify using both the Edgar Casey readings and the Bible. So in this workshop, we are looking at the tabernacle, not on its physical, literal level, we're looking at the tab tabernacle more specifically on a symbolic level. In other words, each article, each division of the tabernacle, 12 tribes of Israel who camped around it, and the daily processes that took place there are symbolic of some aspect or function within the human body, especially as it pertains to meditation. We will further verify this by looking at Chinese medicine, namely acupuncture. We will see that the energy as it is understood in the Orient, or the aura as is sometimes called in the West, actually has a pattern that appears very similar to the tabernacle as found in the Old Testament in the Bible. Now, if I mean successful with this presentation, participants should come away with a greater awareness of these major points. One, the tabernacle is a pattern of the human body. Two, the tabernacle has a duplicate in the body, body's energy or aura system, and three, that this tabernacle is intimately associated with meditation and the movement of energy. Four, that the Bible can be read on a number of different levels beyond the rich, the literal, historic one that is usually understood by the church. The tabernacle was a tent constructed by Moses and the people of Israel in the wilderness. The tribes of Israel who had just left Egypt and are wandering in the desert, which they will do for the next 40 years. The details for the tabernacle's constructions were given to Moses by God. There were several specific de details given concerning the size, the shape, material to be used, orientation of the furniture and structure, even where the tribes of Israel were to camp. As mentioned a moment ago, all of this is to be interpreted symbolically. The tabernacle became a focal point for the many thousands of Israelites sprawled across the wilderness. Edgar Casey said that the Bible can be read on a number of different levels. The literal, historic, is only one level of many. The following Edgar Casey read, psychic readings is talking about the book of the Revelation, specifically how it can apply to all scripture, particularly relevant to the tabernacle. In giving, this is the reading itself. In giving the interpretation of this particular portion of the revelation, it must be kept in mind, as has been indicated, while many of the references are all refer to the physical body as a pattern, there may be said to be the literal, the spiritual, and the metaphysical interpretation of almost portions, almost all portions of scripture, and especially the revelation of John. That's reading 281-31. Most religion interprets scripture on a one-dimensional level, while spirituality interprets it on a multi-dimensional level. Today, we are attempting to show another dimension to the Bible by using the tabernacle and meditation as the model. The, this diagram shows the floor plan of the tabernacle, indicating the three divisions of court, holy place, and holy of holies. The tabernacle was not a permanent structure. It was a tent that could be moved to a new location when the people of Israel moved to a new place. The diagram also shows the placement of the holy furniture within the tabernacle. The red line indicates the veil which separated the holy place from the holy of holies. It was this veil in the temple of Jerusalem that was torn in two pieces at the moment of Jesus' death on the cross. He had previously made the statement that he would tear down the temple and rebuild it in three days. Everyone thought he was crazy since it had taken 40 years to build. It was later understood that it was, he was referring to the temple of his body, which was raised from the dead in three days. This is further evidence that the body is the temple, tabernacle, as the temple in Jerusalem at the same time was a pattern of Jesus' body. This is demonstrated in the next slide. The purpose of our discussion is important. For the purpose of our discussion, it's important to note that the tabernacle, temple, and sanctuary 
were all of the same pattern. Here it can be seen that Solomon's temple was structured after the same pattern as the tabernacle. You can see the same red line for the veil that we were just talking about. The Sea of Bronze was a replacement for the laver, although there were several smaller lavers within the temple. The sea was 15 feet wide with a circumference of 45 feet. feet. It was believed it could hold 27,000 gallons of water. Perhaps this is why it's called a, a sea. Solomon's temple was built in 957 BC and was destroyed in 586 BC by the conquering Babylonians. It was rebuilt a number of times and was finally destroyed by the Romans in the year 70 AD. The only visible remains today is the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. The furniture in the holy place and the Holy of Holies were all made of pure gold. In the court, both the laver and the altar were made of bronze and were the only pieces of furniture in the tabernacle not made of pure gold. The laver was for the priests to wash and purify themselves during their duties in the tabernacle. The altar of sacrifice was for animal offerings to God. For example, among the various types of sacrifices, there was the sin offering for the forgiveness of sin. The repentant person <coughs> pardon me, would bring a lamb to the tabernacle and it would be killed or sacrificed on the altar. The animal was to be the very best of their flock, not some old disease rattled beast that was about to die anyways. By bringing the very best animals, you were making a financial sacrifice as well as a repentance. This is, of course, where we get this, the expression, Jesus, the Lamb of God who died for our sins. These are the articles from the holy place, the seven candlesticks, the incense altar, and the table of the bread of presence of God. Once an animal sacrifice had been made on the altar, the blood from the animal would be sprinkled on those articles of furniture as a means of purification. The seven candlesticks is, of course, the first Jewish menorah. The innermost area of the tabernacle was called the Holy of Holies. It was a place that housed the Ark of the Covenant, and it was here where God was said to reside. The ark and the presence of God were the reasons for the existence of the tabernacle itself. All the other vessels, all the ritual, all the sacrifices, and ministering by the priests were done in reference to the ark and the presence of God. Placed inside the ark was a pot of manna, Aaron's rod, and the Ten Commandments that God had carved onto tablets of stone. The mercy seat was a type of lid to cover the ark and is where Moses sat to talk to God. For those of you who remember the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark with Harrison Ford, will recognize that this is the ark that they were pursuing. The ark is believed to have been a huge capacitor, and capacitors have a tendency to gather electricity. This may explain why the ark is often associated with flashes of lightning. The Bible gives several accounts of people who died when they touched it. Jewish tradition has it that when the high priest entered into the temple, you know, the Holy of Holies, he had a rope tied to his, around his leg in the event that he didn't make it out alive. They could safely pull his corpse out. The ark is believed to have been covered with more than a ton of gold. If you look at these flimsy poles attached to it, it's not very likely that they had the ability to carry it without breaking. There is a Jewish tradition that the ark was able to levitate and there are a number of scriptures in the Bible that seem to suggest that, is, that this may have been true. See Joshua 4.18 for an example. In fact, the word levitation may come from the word Levi, the tribe responsible for carrying the ark. I would like to draw your attention to the Edgar Casey reading on this slide. It is giving a very brief indication of the meaning of the tabernacle. It is the Edgar Cayce reading that verifies that the tabernacle is a symbolic pattern of the human body. The reading goes, the entity finds self, a body, a mind, a soul. These are the shadows which were indicated in the mount by the outer court, the body, the inner court, the mind, and the more holy of holies, the soul. Reading 6027-1. Um, 
the diagram above on the left is trying to portray the tabernacle on a more understandable model. Each of those three divisions of body, mind and soul, has a mental level associated with it. Consciousness is found in the body, and it is the level of mind that we use in this world. The subconscious mind is below the surface, and we encounter it mostly at night while dreaming. Casey tells us that the subconscious becomes the conscious mind for the soul when we die. The superconscious mind is a deep level still in the presence of God. We should think of ourselves as an inverted iceberg. The larger part of us is below the surface. We don't incidentally just have a soul. We are a soul who has temporarily projected ourselves into a physical body. Edgar Cayce dreamed that he was a tiny grain of sand floating and swirling in space, caught up in ever-increasing circles. When he reached the higher, wider circles of the spirit, he could read the Akashic records. The word Akasha comes from Sanskrit and means boundless space. It is the book of life, and it is a record of every individual who has ever lived. It was Edgar Cayce's ability to read this record that gave him his remarkable ability. He also said that we could all develop this ability to read it if we so desired. In reference to Casey's view that the tabernacle is a representation of the bodies, there's, this is also confirmed in the Bible. Some examples from Casey's, from the Bible rather are, they serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly sanctuary, Hebrews 8.5. Do you not know that you are God's temple and God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy and that temple you are. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? You are not your own, you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. For we are the temple of the living God, 2 Corinthians 6.16. The priests who served in the temple, in the tabernacle, were serving a copy and a shadow of the heavenly body. And if, that bo temp and if our bodies are that temple, then the tabernacle is a copy or shadow of our body. This is the entire basic premise of this book. The tabernacle is our body. Now Moses would enter into the Holy Holies and sit on the mercy seat and talk to God. When he came out, his face shone of a light so bright that the people of Israel could not look at him and they became afraid. Now if our bodies are the tabernacle and if Moses went within the tabernacle to talk to God, is it possible for us to enter into our own tabernacle and also talk to God? The Edgar Casey readings say yes. The means to do this is through deep meditation. Uh, here's some Casey readings. He has promised to meet thee in the temple of thine own body, for it has been given. The body is the temple of God, the tabernacle, yea, for thy soul. And in the Holy of Holies, within thine own conscience, he may walk and talk with thee. What is meditation? It is not musing nor daydream, but as we find our bodies made up physical, mental, and spiritual, it is a tuning of the mental body and the physical body to its spiritual source. This is true meditation. Prayer is supplication to God. Meditation is listening to his answer. Meditation is listening to the divine within. The practice of meditation has been intimately connected to the seven spiritual centers located at the seven endocrine glands. Edgar Gacy said that the endocrine glands, the spiritual centers, where points in the body where the physical, mental, and spiritual meet. We just saw the Casey readings say that the tabernacle is where the body, mind, and soul also meets. Some people have suggested that the seven candlesticks in the tabernacle seems to be the logical symbol for the seven spiritual centers. And on some level, this may likely be the case. But I think the seven spiritual centers play a higher, bigger role in the tabernacle. On this slide, I have superimposed the tabernacle over the human body, showing the endocrine glands. When we do this, there are a couple of important points to observe. At each division of the tabernacle, there is a corresponding body cavity. 
There are three major body cavities, the cranial cavity, the thoracic cavity, and the abdominal cavity. In other words, these cavities seem to correspond to the court, the abdominal cavity, the holy of holies, the thoracic cavity, and the holy of holies, the cranial cavity. The seven endocrine glands are located in these cavities and they seem to sit in the approximate position of the tabernacle furniture. This is not 100% accurate, but we are dealing with an exact, we are not dealing with an exact science. We're dealing with symbolism. Casey readings gave a large number of, of uh, discussions on the book of the Revelation. And much of this information is about the endocrine glands and they, the role they play in our spiritual development. This is a chart showing the seven endocrine glands and some correlations to color, elements, the Lord's Prayer, and the planets that are found in those readings. The column on the right was added by me to show some possible connections to the stages of entering the tabernacle and the seven endocrine glands. Edgar Casey referred to the seven spiritual centers as the endocrine glands located in the physical body, but connected to the mind and soul. The seven chakras are found in Eastern philosophy and are said to be located in the energy body. The energy flows in not just the chakras, but in the entire body. This distinction between physical body and the energy body will be important in a few minutes when we talk about the energy tabernacle. You will notice in this slide how the endocrine glands and the chakras seem to be in the same locations. The energy body is sometimes called the finer physical body or aura body. When the body is healthy, the aura is full, bright, and colorful. When we are sick, its appearance is dull and weak. This can be seen with Kirlian photography, which takes pictures of the human aura. On, the, on this slide, we have a couple of examples. Some people seem to have this ability to see the auras, with just the naked eye. I had the opportunity to see and use the oroscope designed by Edgar Casey in the readings. It was a lecture by Sidney Kilpatrick in Ottawa. I could actually see someone's aura, very exciting. Edgar Casey said that our diet should consist of 80% fresh fruits and vegetables. When you eat a piece of lettuce, for example, you are absorbing the minerals, vitamins, enzymes, etc but you're also absorbing the life force from the plant and adding it to your own. Breathing and exercise also replenish this force. If you eat processed foods such as potato chips, soft drinks, or even KD, you are absorbing products that may have small amounts of nutrition, but are probably 100% devoid of this life force. If you are not replenishing it, you will eventually become sick and run down. The finer physical body may be best explained in the analogy of steam, water, and ice. Steam is vibrating at a higher rate than water or ice, or put differently, steam is a finer form of water or ice. Likewise, the finer physical body, example of steam, is just a finer or higher rate of vibration than the more dense physical body. It is within this energy body that we find the energy tabernacle. Chinese medicine has been aware of this energy body for thousands of years. A Western medical doctor studies the body's physical anatomy. The Chinese physician studies the body's energy pattern, its pathways, rivers, and streams of flowing energy. Chinese acupuncturists also studies the acupuncture points, their location, and their, and their function. This energy is sometimes called qi, and it's the life force. It is a finer form of the physical body. The chi energy flows in well-defined pathways and its movement can become blocked. It is the job of the acupuncturist to move or manipulate energy from locations that are overabundant or areas where it is lacking. There are 12 main pathways of energy movement called meridians, which are either yin or yang in quality and they are bilateral. There are 365 points on the 12 main meridians. There are also many, many vessels that flow between meridians and connect the, mer the meridians together. Hint, the tabernacle sat in the wilderness surrounded by 12 tribes of Israel, and the energy tabernacle is a function in the body that is surrounded by 12 meridians of acupuncture. 
To understand any of this, it is necessary to understand a little more about the philosophy behind Chinese medicine. They were tireless observers of nature, conscious of the ever-recurring changes from night to day, season to season, life to death. These continuous changes were guided by the Tao, pronounced Tao. The Chinese idea, it's a Chinese idea close to God in the West. Tao means infinite origin from which all flows all that exists. From the Tao emanates the dual principles of yin and yang. All change is the result of the rich, rhythmic interchange between yin and yang. Day changes to night, night changes back to day. Everything becomes, changes from a passive stage to an active phase back to a passive one. Yin is the dark, cold, passive, and negative one. Uh, yang is the warm, bright, active, and positive one. We can't equate this to good and evil. Poles of a battery are not good and evil. Each depends on the other for survival. The human body is divided into yin and yang regions. The upper parts of the body are yang because they are closest to the great yang, the heavens. The lower regions are yin because they're closest to the earth, the great yin. The front and inner regions are yin, while the back and outer regions are yang. Even the internal organs are divided along yin and yang. The mostly solid organs, heart, kidney, lungs, spleen, and liver are yin, while the mostly hollow organs, large intestine, bladder, stomach, small intestine, bladder, are yang. At the core of this yin-yang balance in the body is what we call the qi energy, the most basic form of energy. The energy which we, it's the energy which we have been discussing. It is this energy that allows through, that flows through the organs of the body and acts along the meridians. This energy is the most significant difference between Western and Chinese medicine. Western medicine is preoccupied with the physical body and its chemical reactions used to explain everything. It studies the body and its anatomy. The Chinese physician studies the body's energy, which, which consists of rivers and streams of well-defined energy patterns and acupuncture points. These are examples of meridians with a series of acupuncture points. So what is an acupuncture point? For one, it is a small spot on the skin that has very low resistance to electricity. Water carries electricity very well, which, why, which is why we don't swim during a thunderstorm. In other words, water has very low, very low resistance to electricity. Glass and rubber have very high resistance to electricity, which is why we wear rubber gloves if we're handling anything that might give us an electric shock. Everything has varying levels of resistance to electricity. An acupuncture point, like water, has a lower resistance to electric currents than the rest of the skin. Because of this, we can use modern electric tools, electronic tools, to measure acupoints by measuring their resistance. While we can't see the chi energy, acupuncture points can be proven, proven by the existence of these modern electronics. Each of the acupuncture points is connected to an internal organ or a specific place in an organ. For instance, there is a point in the ear that is connected to the thumb. At a certain school of acupuncture, they would demonstrate to their students how acupuncture points are connected to remote areas of the body by locating the point, this point on the ear and gently touching it with a probe. There would be no discomfort in doing so. They would bring out a thumb screw and place it on the thumb. They would tighten it until the thumb became sore and they then again would place the probe on the thumb point on the ear. The student would now grimace and jerk their head because the point was now painful to touch. When the thumb screw was removed from the ear, the ear was then again probed and the point sensitivity had returned to normal. Acupuncturists use painful points to diagnose where a problem exists in the body. For example, if the acupuncture point on the small intestine meridian is painful, there may be problems with the small intestine.
in the small intestine meridian of the hand, Taiyang meridians, the slide on the right, the numbering starts in the little finger and counts up the arm toward the shoulder, which gives us the direction of the energy's movement because we can electronically test and verify the points. And this is one of the only ways that we really can prove that acupuncture exists other than the fact that it actually works. Now, meridians are bilateral. They're found on both sides of the body, which means that those 365 acupuncture points are actually 365 times two. The heart meridian has the pathway of acupuncture points on both the right and the left arm. The heart meridian starts its flow of energy internally at the area of the heart itself, exit near the armpit, and flows down the inside of the arm and ends at the little finger. As was mentioned a moment ago, this means that the energy in the heart meridian is flowing down the arm to the fingers. From the, from the little finger, the energy goes to the next meridian, the next meridian and flows up the arm to the interior of the body. The energy continually flows through all the meridians day and night from one meridian to the other. As it does, the energy changes from yang to yin and back again. All meridians have an external section in the skin and an internal section associated with an organ from which it gets its name, all of them with one exception. All of the meridians indicate the direction of energy movement by the direction of the numbering system. The direction that the energy moves will be significant in a few moments when we discuss this further. Um, this is the kidney meridian, point on the foot and count upwards along the foot and the leg. In this yin meridian, the energy is moving upward from the earth towards the heavens. Acupuncture points can be simulated, stimulated by inserting needles into them, or they can be stimulated by electricity, lasers, massage, and warming them with, by burning a herb called moxa close to them. Stomach and large intestine meridians. Now, all meridians are in sort associated with an internal organ, except the triple burner. It is associated with a function rather than an actual physical organ. It still has the external pathway of acupuncture points, but internally, it doesn't have a ter territory of, it, of its own. It is this internal function of the triple burner where we find the energy tabernacle. Now, this is a function within the body, and we've got it laid out here on the chart with the tabernacle on one side and the, what we call the triple burner on the other side. It is this internal function of the triple burner where we find the energy of the tabernacle. Um, number one, the tabernacle was divided into three sections, the court, holy place, and holy of holies, and each is associated with one of the three major body cavities. In most textbooks on acupuncture, the triple burner is shown as the three body cavities. And in a few textbooks, it appears that it, as it is here with squares showing the areas of influence for each burning space. Number two, the tabernacle has three burning places, incense altar, sacrificial altar, and a fire burned outside the camp. The triple burner by its name has three burning places. Specifically, the th three burning places are shown here in the stomach. You'll see that on the diagram on the extreme right. Uh, in the Bible, the tribe of Levi were the priests. They were the priests, and one of their main responsibilities was looking after the tabernacle. Levi himself was, of course, a son of Jacob, who was later renamed Israel. And Levi's descendants formed this tribe of priests. Levi, in turn, had three sons whose descendants formed three distinct subgroups within the tribe of Levi, and the members of each group had specific duties concerning the tabernacle. You can see these divisions in the Old Testament in Numbers 3, 4, and 7. As the counterpart to the tabernacle, the triple burner was the only meridian divided into three sections, and each section was responsible for, sec for specific functions within the three burning spaces. 
Another similarity is found within the ritual of sacrifice. When an animal was killed in the, in the, sac, killed in the sacrifice, the Levites separated the animal into pure and impure parts and sprinkled the blood as a way to purify the inner areas of the tabernacle. They then burned the pure part on the altar, but the impure parts were eliminated in that fire outside the camp. In a similar process, the triple burner received food in, receives food into the stomach and then divides the food into pure and impure parts. The very pure parts rise up to the upper burner and become part of the chi energy circling in the, circulating in the meridians. The impure parts sink to the lower, in the lower burner where it is eliminated from the body. The two processes in both the tabernacle and the, the triple burner appear quite similar. More similarities between the tabernacle and the triple burner are found in the names and functions of the acupuncture points. For instance, in classical acupuncture, there is an acupoint on the abdomen that is recognized as regulating water for the entire body. See the red dot on the right diagram. Um, this is... This acupuncture point sits at the exact spot that the laver would sit. The laver, of course, is full of water. Incidentally, it is also the same place where the Leiden gland is located, in, and the Leiden is also associated with the element water. Another acupuncture point, God's, called God's Courtyard, is found in the forehead, where the tabernacle, in the tabernacle, it would be the place where God resided. A third point, called Conception Vessel 17 has some interesting names, especially if you associate this point with the incense altar. Remember, these names come from different schools of acupuncture who may have different names for the same points. One school calls it penetrating odor, which might be a good name for the strong smell of incense. Another school calls it middle altar, which is obvious. And finally, smell like a goat, or bloody smell, given that we are talking about the incense altar, which often had the blood of a goat sprinkled on it for purification, all these names fit quite well. One final example of the similarities between the triple burner and the tabernacle. When the Israelites conquered the promised land, they divided it into regions one region for each of the tribes. One tribe, the tribe of Levi, were not given a region of their own. They were given certain cities within the districts of the other tribes. This was because they were the priesthood. They needed to be near the other tribal members to perform their priestly functions. Likewise, the tribe of Levi's counterpart, the triple burner, also doesn't have a region of its own. It doesn't have an organ associated with it. It is functional rather than an organ. In fact, in each of the other meridians, the triple burner has an acupuncture point that is believed to be a representative of the triple burner, just as the Levites are represented in the other tribes. Now, there are quite a few correspondence between the 12 tribes of Israel and the meridians of acupuncture than just the ones we saw here from the tribe of Levi. We see this in these two sites. The chart on the left was created by an Edgar Cayce study group who were studying the book of the Revelation. Since the 12 tribes of Israel were found in the Revelation, a number of readings were given by Mr. Casey on the significance pertaining to the 12 meridian divisions of the body. The Revelation, according to Casey, was taking place in John's own body as he transcends or ascends the physical body to a more spiritual one through deep meditation. The symbols and other imagery found in the Revelation show the impact of this newfound spiritual energy as, it's wo as it wars with old patterns of selfish energy. Members of that original study group put this chart together and asked the unconscious Casey to comment, and he said it was relatively correct. The chart on the right side is showing the 12 meridians of acupuncture, the elements associated with each meridian and the attributes of each Given the fact that the Casey readings and the acupuncture were so graphically remote from each other, the similarities between these two charts <coughs> is remarkable. 
Notice how the elements of fire and water are near the top of both charts and the element earth is near the bottom. Ladder meridian is the most external. Yang meridian, meaning it is the brightest, most light, which corresponds to light on the study group side. In Chinese philosophy, the soul is thought to reside in the heart, and this is indicated on the right of the chart. On the left, the revelation chart shows the soul at the very same level as the tribe of Joseph. Perhaps one of the most significant correlations between these two charts is the tribe of Benjamin. When the study group put the chart together, they looked for a physical attribute equal to the human will. They decided that the bones were what made a strong, positive, and upright, qualities associated with the will. In Chinese philosophy, the kidneys are responsible for both the bones and the will, and both Benjamin and the kidneys have water as their element. We've already discussed the triple burner and some of the correlations between it and the tabernacle, but there is one more. We see that the tribe of Levi is associated with glands. It is interesting considering the tribe was scattered throughout the territories of the other tribes, and the endocrine glands are scattered throughout the human body. In at least one school of acupuncture in Germany, the triple burner is called the endocrine meridian. Another interesting correlation between the two charts is the tribe of Asher, which has life as its attribute. We also see life as the attribute of the Chinese chart. Interesting, in English, the words life and liver are from the same stem. Some believe that the element wood was added to the Chinese elements to show how life fit in with the four other elements. We also see, see that the tribe of Manassas and, and, large, and the large intestine have com elimination as their attribute. While the correlations between the education side of the chart and the Chinese side are not perfect, they are, there are enough similarities for us to realize there's something more going on here than just coincidence. Acupuncture was virtually unheard of in the U.S. at the time the study group put their chart together, and it is, it is amazing how many similarities exist between them. Without the education study group adding the attributes and elements to the 12 tribes, we would have no cross-reference at all between these two charts other than the number 12. Both the meridians and the tribes consisted of 12 divisions. Chinese developed this meridian system with its attributes and elements over many thousands of years. The study group under God's Casey's direction developed a remarkable, remarkably similar system in just a few years, having likely never even having heard of acupuncture. At this point, I would like to bring you together almost everything we have talked about so far in a sort of pre-summary. Imagine that the diagram on the left is the tabernacle sitting in the desert surrounded by the 12 tribes of Israel. I have placed it over the body of a meditating man. On the right is the tabernacle surrounded by 12 meridians of ac acupuncture. On the right is the triple burner surrounded by 12 meridians of acupuncture. Three major body cavities are relevant on both sides of the diagram. In fact, in classical acupuncture, uh, in fact, in classical acupuncture, each section of the triple burner is actually dupe depicted as round and aligned with the three major body cavities. I've shown them square to illustrate the areas that the upper, middle, and lower brain spaces have control over. Seven chakras are just as relevant on either of the tabernacle or the triple burner side of the diagram. A different yet complementary pattern of movement is also found in the energy layers of the body. You will remember that when I showed you the diagrams in the meridians, that there were two meridians to a page, and at the top of each page there was a title, such as Tai Yang, Shao Yin. Each of those pairs of meridians, one on the arm and one on the leg, form a level of energy. As an analogy, think of the oceans where the water currents flow in layers. There are cold layers at the bottom, and there are warmer layers near the surface. The Gulf Stream flows from the southern oceans, bringing warm waters up to the southern parts of Greenland. 
beneath this Gulf Stream and flowing in the opposite direction to the south is a deep level of cold water. It is the same ocean with different layers of ocean currents. This is one of the ways that the energy moves in the human body. There are layers of cold, of yin cold currents and yang warm currents, which move in different levels in the body. There are six levels within the 12 meridians, but there are two more levels to be discussed in a few more minutes. A layer's level or of yin and yang are determined by how deep or how superficial that layer exists in the body. The more superficial, closest to the heavens that a layer flows, the more yang it is considered to hold. The more internal a layer, the more yin a layer holds. The sea of all yang governor vessel and the sea of all yin conception vessel are two more pathways for energy to move throughout the body. These are two of the most yin and yang layers. We'll discuss them a little more in this next slide. Not this slide, the next slide. A moment ago, we talked about the 12 tribes and we compared two charts, the Revelation chart and the Chinese chart. There are some remarkable similarities between the two, but the Chinese chart wasn't arrived at randomly. In other words, I did not, for instance, place the heart meridian whose attribute is the soul beside the tribe of Joseph because his attribute is also soul. I didn't place the kidney meridian next to the tribe of Benjamin because they both have bones and will willpower as their attributes. There is a reason for this particular order of placement according to the rules of classical acupuncture. And we see here how this placement came about. Among the layers, the tie-in layer is closest to the heavens, and as such, it contains the most yang energy, and it is placed on the top of the six layers. And at the opposite end of the at the opposite end, the Sheo Yin is closest, closest to the earth, and it is therefore the most yin layer of energy, and it is placed at the bottom. The four meridians that comprise the Tai Yin and Shei Yang, Sheo Yang, are the ones found at the, in the top places on the chart. In other words, the meridians found in the most extreme yin yang positions are at the top of the chart, and they are the elements of fire and water. So then the tribe of Zebulon has, has light as its attribute. And across from it, the Chinese chart is the bladder. We mentioned earlier that the bladder is the most yang, meaning it is the highest, brightest meridian, meaning that light is a perfect attribute for it. The most neutral yin and yang layers are the yang ming and the tai yin. The most neutral means that even though the tai yin is, is yin in character, these meridians have far less yin energy than say the shio yin. Same is true of the yang min. It has far less yang energy than the yang min, the tai yang, the tai yang rather, and even the shio yang. The four meridians that comprise these most neutral layers are the four meridians holding the four lowest positions found on the chart. Likewise, the middle layers found in the yin yang quality are also found in the middle parts of the chart. Now it's not vital to our understanding of the tabernacle that you know this little bit of information, but I have included here to reinforce just how remarkable it was that the Casey group came up with a chart that fits so well with the rules of acupuncture. The only yin yang positions more extreme than all the other layers are the governor vessel and the conception vessels to be discussed next. If the extreme positions of Tai Yang and Shea Yang are the top of the chart, then even more extreme positions of governor and conception vessels would be higher yet. But considering these two layers as one, this would give us a seventh layer, and those seventh layers could represent the seven spiritual centers, or put differently, these seven spiritual centers of energy could represent the seven chakras, which we know are found in the energy body. The governor vessel, known in classical acupuncture as the sea of all yang, is the most external vessel in the body, that is the closest to the heavens, and therefore the most yang layer. 
Vessels are not meridians, they are vessels. Meridians are bilingual, they are, they are on both sides of the body, while vessels are unilingual. This vessel appears to put the appears to be the pathway that the Kundalini energy rises during meditation. It also seems to pass through the area of the seven chakras. It should also be noted that the 12 meridians all have internal connections to both the governor vessel and the conception vessel. The conception vessel known in classical acupuncture, uh, it's known as the sea of all yin. It is the most internal layer because it is closest to the earth. The Taoist meditators believe that when we meditate, the energy rises up the spine, up over the forehead, and down the front of the body to the genital area. It then repeats this motion in what is known as the circulation of the light, sometimes called the microcosmic orbit. It is a backward flowing motion because the energy moving up the spine is yang and is moving in the opposite direction of the yang energy in the meridians. I will explain this a little better in a few minutes. When the energy passes over the top of the head, it is now moves downward toward the earth. This is swimming against the current, if you will, because the energy fl normally flows upward in the conception vessel. The energy be is being asked to move in the opposite direction. The microcosmic orbit is a specific type of ch Chinese meditation. This book on the right side of the slide is an excellent one for learning this method of meditation. On the left side of the slide, all of the little flames encircling the body in the diagram are acupuncture points located on the governor vessel and conception vessels. It is at these points that the 12 meridians of acupuncture have internal connections to these two major vessels. When you are meditating, you can concentrate on these acupuncture points. Casey says that in meditation, we should use the imaginative forces to envision or visualize the energy moving. With an inhalation, we imagine the energy lifting up the spine along the governor vessel and over the top of our head to the forehead. With an exhalation, we visit the energy moving down the midline of our front following the concept path of the conception vessel to the genital area. The next inhal inhalation is a repeat of the first and so on. In terms of polarity, that is the yin-yang polarity, these two vessels are the most extreme in that these vessels, that in these vessels, the heavens and the earth are united. This is not just a Taoist idea. Consider these next few slides. The Star of David is a symbol found in the flag of Israel. It is also a well-recognized meditative symbol. The upward pointing triangle is the ancient alchemist symbol for fire, as fire reaches upwards towards the heavens. The downward pointing triangle is the ancient alchemist symbol for, for water, which flows downward toward the earth. The ancient Hebrew language did not have vowels, but consonants only. In her book, Symbols in the Self, Violet Shelley states that the ancient, in the ancient human Hebrew language, the joining of the consonants for the words fire and water formed a word or secret sign that meant the equivalent of God. So joining of the two triangles in the Star of David is symbolically showing a union of fire and water signifying God. A second example of this is seen in the Chinese philosophy. And this particular case from the book of I Ching or Book of Changes. Li is a Chinese symbol for fire, and like fire, it moves, reaches upwards towards the heavens. It is comprised of three lines, two straight lines, and a broken line. Can is a Chinese symbol with two broken lines and one solid line. It represents water, and like water, it moves in a downward direction towards the earth. There is a Chinese book of meditation called The Secret of the Golden Flower. In this book, there is a description of the inner process of meditation whereby the symbolic mar marriage of Kan and Lee brings about the creation of the new person in perfect harmony or oneness with the Tao. Remember, the Tao is a Chinese idea close to what the West calls God. Like the Israeli flag, this concept is also integrated onto a national flag, that of South Korea. 
In the center of this flag, we see the yin-yang symbol with the trigrams of Can and Li. The other two symbols are the trigrams of heaven and earth. This third example was taken from a lecture on walking by walking. This third example was taken from a lecture on walking meditation by Joseph Rael, better known as Beautiful Painted Arrow, a Native American, Southwestern youth. The word for God in his native language is Wamachi. Wa is heaven and Ma is earth. The arrows indicate a direction of movement and a uniting of the two worlds. Chi means action or God in action, which is another way of saying creativity. We don't see the symbol, this symbolism integrated into the flag or seal of the Ute people. They integrated it directly into their language. This chart is kind of a summary of the previous three. The three examples are all meditative symbols, symbols designed to show uniting of heaven and earth and man particularly during meditation. One of these is from the Middle East, another from China, and another from North America. They couldn't get any further remote, remote from each other. I believe this is called archetypal symbols, reaching at a deep level of the unconscious mind in common to all people. We also see the same theory in the movement of energy through the acupuncture meridians. A little while ago, we talked about the numbering of the systems, and that this indicated the way in which the energy was flowing in any particular meridian. Well, if we stand with our arms over, over our head, the energy in all meridians are moving from the earth in an upward direction towards the heavens. All yang meridians are flowing downward from the heavens toward the earth. Men and women stand with their feet on the ground, their heads in the heavens and are part of both worlds. When we meditate, the energies of heaven and earth are being united in us. It's not until we unite these two worlds within us do we become one with God. It is a process that mystics, meditators, and ancient alchemists have been trying to accomplish for thousands of years. The process of uniting heaven and earth in us can be seen as a psychological process as well. The Edgar Casey readings often talked about two aspects of ourselves, the personality and the individuality. The personality is that portion of us having to do with this world, the earth, and the emotions we develop here over many course, course of many lifetimes. It is this portion of us that we project for others to see. The individuality is closer to our real selves. It is that portion of ourselves that we develop in the planets or in the heavens between our reincarnations on earth. Part of our soul growth is accomplished by the integrating a little bit of the individuality, heavens, into the personality, put differently, joining heaven and earth. This is a very simplified explanation of Casey's concept of individual and personality, but it serves a purpose of reinforcing this pattern of joining heavens and earth. The idea that we're uniting heaven and earth in us as we meditate is important and we're going to expand on this a little. Casey says that the endocrine glands and the life force involved in meditation are the same endocrine glands and the life force involved in the conception and growth of a human baby. It is the same pattern in both. The ancient Chinese meditators thought the same thing. This image is from a Chinese book of meditation called The Secret of the Golden Flower. Its caption is Origin of the New Being in the place of power. In other words, when we meditate, we are allowing the same energies involved in the conception of growth of a child to be activated in the body's energy. We are allowing the energies of heaven and earth to become united within us and the conception takes place. In this next slide, we see how this conception can happen in the energy paralleling the four biological phases of the monthly cycle. The energy layers outlined here in red are the same ones we discussed a while ago, showing their level of depth or superficiality in the body. This is the same layers and the same order seen in previous slide. This layering is how we reach the placement of the 12 meridians when we compared the 12 tribes of Israel shown on the two charts. Each of these same layers seems to have a role in the 28 day biological cycle. 
If we look at the chart, consider that the conception and governor vessels may be considered on a level together. This makes seven layers, one for each of the seven chakras and seven endocrine glands. In each of the seven day cycles, the monthly menstrual cycle comes into play. A corresponding and intensified movement of energy occurs in one of the yin and at one same time, one of the yang layers. During the ovulation, ovulation stage, the tide of energy is greatly enhanced in the tai yin, the spleen and lungs, and the yang ming, stomach at large intestine energy layers. As this stage, stage nears completion, this mass energy is recuperated and gathers in the conception vessel. During the tubal migration, the same stage mass emerges in the chewyin, liver and pericardium, pericardium, and the triple burner and gallbladder layers. And in the premenstrual stage, the energy of the shao yang, heart and kidneys, and the tai yang, bladder and small intestine layers reach fullness. As each of these stages reaches its conclusion, the energy is recuperated and gathers in the conception and governor vessels. Two separate movements of energy observed, are observed to exist during this complete cycle, one in the yin and one in the yang energy. Following the yin layers from one to four, we see that the dominant energy is gradually working its way inward. From stage one to four, the yang energy is working its way outward and toward the exterior. In other words, there's a movement toward the interior, earthwards, and towards the interior, heavenwards, which occurs simultaneously in the respective yin and yang meridians. At the conclusion of this monthly cycle, there's a huge accumulation of yin and yang energy in the conception and governor vessels. If conception takes place, the energies are united. If not, the energy is dispersed throughout the body. It's a natural law of the universe for opposites to be attracted to each other. This is even true of the attraction between men and women as between two poles of a magnet. The basic principles are the same. An action, an attraction between polar opposites. In this respect, the movement of the yin and yang energy toward the heaven and earth during the monthly cycle is simply another example of the law of attraction. Just like the joining of the negative and positive poles of a battery creates an electric current so does the joining of the yang positive and the yin negative pole in the conception and governor vessels also creates an, an energy current. In this case, the joining, this conception, if you will, creates the movement of the life force, sometimes called the kundalini. It moves or circulates up the spine and down the front of the body. Keeping with the theme of uniting heaven and earth, let me show you what happens in nature when heaven and earth are united. Lightning is an electric current that is the result of the joining of heaven and earth. In this case, a negative and a positive buildup. Within the thunderclouds, many small bits of ice bump into each other and swirl around in the air. All these conclusions creates an electric charge. After a while, the whole cloud fills up with electrical charges, usually within a, uh, usually a negative charge, yin, closest to the earth. Since opposites attract each other, that causes a positive charge, yang, to build up in the ground beneath the cloud. The crowd's electrical charge concentrates around anything that sticks up, such as mountains, lone trees, or even people. The charge is streaming up from these points eventually connects to the charge reaching down from the clouds and zap, lightning strikes. The intense heat of the lightning bolt causes the surrounding air to explode outward with a gigantic boom of thunder and it is estimated that each lightning strike consists of several hundred million volts. Put that in perspective, the outlet in your house has about 110 volts. The amount of power moving through a power line between telephone poles in your street is, is many thousands of volts. So what happens if a lightning bolt or even power from your telephone poles were to be fed directly into, say, your television set? It would fry all the circuits, probably explode it as well. 
mostly electronics in your house from your TV to your clock radio operate on 24 volts, 12 volts or less. Even the 110 volts in your wall socket is too much energy for their delicate circuit, circuitry. The way that frying is prevented through is through the use of what's known as step-down transformer. Transformer receives high amounts of electricity and the way the copper wire is wound internally, it transforms the electric energy to a lower voltage and higher current. In other words, the transformer changes the nature of the currency and prevents delicate circuitry. In the human body, the endocrine glands are the transformers. When we are meditating, we have the potential to unleash powerful energies. Kundalini is a powerful, powerful energy. The endocrine glands are, as transformers, protect the body's delicate circuitry. The meridians and, and the health brought about by... Excuse me, I have a dog to get rid of. Get out of here. The endocrine glands as transformers protect the body's delicate circuitry, the meridians, the energy, and the health brought about by their balance. Joining the energies of heaven and earth, like jo joining two poles of a battery, creates an energy current. It is a current of energy that can cause major problems if the centers are opened in an unsafe manner or before we are ready. We see an example of extreme energy flowing through the master just after his resurrection. At this point, Jesus' vibrations were so high that it would have been deadly for the ordinary person to touch him. Casey was asked about this, and his answer, his question was, why did Jesus say, touch me not, when he first appeared to Mary after the resurrection? Casey's response, for the vibrations to which the glorified body was raised would have been the same as physical body touching a high power current. Why do you say, do not touch the wire? If you are in accord or in touch with the earth, it doesn't harm. Otherwise, it's too bad. In this reading, do not touch the earth means to be grounded, like wearing rubber boots when you touch electricity. A bird can sit on an electric wire with no effect, but if it touches the ground and the wire at the same time, it will be electrocuted. This reading also says there will be no effect if you're in accord. A good example of being in accord is Moses, who raised his body's energy vibrational levels to the point where he could go into the Holy of Holies, sit on the ark, which killed everyone else who touched it. When he came out, light, his face shined of a light so bright he had to cover a veil over his face. As we meditate, as we eat the right kinds of food, as we think the right kinds of thoughts, we are raising our vibrations and making ourselves in accord. I want to be clear here before we go to the next slide. In meditation, we're not talking about electricity. It's a different kind of energy altogether. We're just using that electricity as an example. You will remember when we were talking about the aura and how we'd use the analogy of steam, water, and ice. Steam vibrates at a higher rate than either water and ice, and we compare that to the finer physical body. Meditation is a process to raise the rate of vibration in the body. Everything we do or think has the potential to raise or lower our vibrational rate. Nick and Casey often recommended dietary rules to help raise our vibrations. Things like, for instance, eat th three vegetables that grow above ground to everyone grown below ground. Don't eat pork because it will lower our vibrations. Negative, selfish, material-mindedness will lower our vibrations. While positive, loving, and spiritual thoughts will raise it. It was the lowering of our vibrational rate that got us into the physical world in the first place, and it will require our raising it to get us out. The finer physical body may be the finer physical body may be the one that we occupy when we die. The energy body consists of our aura, the chakras, and the energy in the meridians and vessels. Everything we do affects this. When we move, eat, breathe, become emotional, or even think, we affect the energy in the body. When we meditate, we calm the energy, focus on it, and move it. When our minds can direct this energy, with our minds, we can direct this energy to various parts of the body and heal ourselves or even heal others. 
the high, Chinese acupuncturists have an understanding that the health of the body will be determined first in the energy and then progress to the physical. In other words, disease or wellness first shows up in the energy before it shows up in the physical body. So if you are working with a healthcare regime in your work, or you are working with meditation and you haven't yet seen the, the results that you desire, be patient. It takes longer for the results to be seen in the physical body because it is much more dense than the energy. And some of us are much more dense than the rest of us. Positive results may already exist in the energy level. Finally, even though the tabernacle has long passed into history, it is still influencing the Christian church to this day. For instance, the three major divisions of the tabernacle are still the basic pattern of many modern churches and cathedrals. The covenant of Moses and the 12 tribes of Israel has been replaced with Jesus and the 12 apostles. At the front of these churches are often found the seven candlesticks and the burning of incense. The laver used to wash the priests in the tabernacle has been replaced with the baptismal font and the holy water. The blood of sacrifice and the bread of the presence of God has been replaced by the bread and wine of Holy Communion. The sin offering on the altar of the tabernacle was for the forgiveness of, forgiveness of sin. Jesus now is now considered the Lamb of God, sacrificed for our forgiveness. At the Last Supper, Jesus told his followers to eat his body, the bread, and drink his blood, the wine. The Catholic Church believes in transubutation, that the blood and wine of Holy Communion is literally converted into the actual body and blood of Jesus. In meditation, this may be very true. Edgar Casey in her book, Meditation Gateway to Light, said that communion, that is, as it is practiced by the modern Christian church, is a formalized ritual of an inner communion during meditation. She said, the creative force, holy force rising to the pineal is the bread from within or his body. The Holy Ghost descending is his Holy Spirit, his blood or the spirit of his blood. They are blended at the area of the pineal. To partake of his body and his blood is to be sustained by the holy forces within which have been purified by him. It is through trying to live his purposes to walk in his footsteps to shed the blood of all selfish physical desires that we experience true communion through the descent, of, the descent of the Holy Ghost. Notice how during communion, the congregation moves in the church in a very Kundalini-like flow to the front to partake of the bread and wine. It seems that many of the rituals and symbols from the church have their roots in the ancient tabernacle. At a deep symbolic level, these rituals and symbolism are perhaps meant to parallel the body and the enter, entering within through deep meditation. It is, it is the mind's unfoldment as we move from the dense physical body to the lighter spiritual body, sometimes called the Christ consciousness or oneness with God. <clears throat> That's the conclusion of this presentation for now.